So it looks like this LM2 here needs a replacement DPF filter. So we're going to go ahead and show just what is involved in the whole removal process of the DPF on this LM2. Now this will be getting a replacement new DPF, but this video is for entertainment purposes only and it's merely to show roughly what goes on when the DPF is removed from an LM2 engine how intrusive the job is, and just the overall what it takes to do the job. It is quite extensive as you need to remove quite a bit, and we're going to get into that right now. Working on the passenger side of the vehicle, we have the battery in front of us. Got to discharge the AC so that way we can remove the AC hoses. Battery will need to be removed, so disconnecting everything on the battery, the fuse block, the other fuse block. 7 millimeter nuts or bolts. Fuse block comes off. You got connectors remaining. We're going to remove all of those connectors, get them out of the way. Battery has been removed. Next up is the tray itself. Fender well removed completely. Gives us better access to see the EGR. Cooler assembly and the pipe. This pipe will need to be removed. EGR assembly completely removed as well. Hoses have been disconnected at this point. Working on the other, all of the hoses to the cooler. Obviously, coolant was drained. 10 millimeter bolts removed for the bracket. Working on just removing this as a complete assembly. There's two nuts in the back side there. Connection disconnected. There is a hose in the back side, very difficult to get to. With the EGR valve, cooler assembly removed. Definitely much more access to the DPF itself. Here's the EGR valve or the cooler assembly on the bench. This is completely removed so you can see what it what it took to remove. This is the ground that goes to the DPF assembly. Once removing that one nut there is actually another nut on the back side there and this is the bracket holding the DPF to the engine block transmission area. You can see the nut right there. This is our def injector. The clamp is a one-time use. Look at all the nastiness on the bottom of there. That's common. It's okay. We're going to take a closer look at that later. All the brackets holding the DPF in place are what we're working on right now. Gaining access to all those are a little bit difficult, but you can get to them. On the front side, there's three nuts holding the one bracket in place up against the block. Very tough to see, but there are three. It's actually easier to get to from the top side, and I just showed the bracket right there. This is the DPF assembly almost ready to come off. We need to get that heat shield off of there. You can see the AC lines have all been removed out of the way. Heater hose is disconnected. That DPF is just about ready to come out. On the bottom side here, we need to work on this back pressure valve down there. Everything else is pretty much removed. From the bottom of the back pressure valve, you want to. We need to take off these two 15 millimeter nuts. Back pressure valve has been removed, or at least unbolted. With all the brackets undone, we can now wiggle this free, like so. On the back side, there is a bracket that extends to the engine block transmission area. It's just very difficult to get to those two nuts on the back side. They do not need to be removed. The new DPF will actually come with a new bracket. But you don't need to fully remove this bracket to get to or to get the DPF off. Just need it loose so that way the DPF can actually be wiggled free. DPF has been wiggled free right here. We're going to go ahead and start to pull this out through the top side. It is heavy. Two people is a good idea, but if you have just one, most, most of the time one person can do it. This is the arrangement that the DPF was going to come out. And we have the bracket shown there. That's where it was resting on. Here's our back pressure valve down there. Just showing the engine bay area and the amount of room that there is now that it's removed. Down here through the fender well, we're just looking inside, just going over, just basic visuals, kind of see what uh, what all is there on the right side of the engine block. 
a little bit closer view with the better lighting. Here's our back pressure valve that will open and close based on needs from the ECM commanding it. Here's just a quick little look inside the turbocharger just for funsies. You can see all the soot back there. This is the bracket I was talking about. It just needs to be loose. And it's tough to get to. There is limited access back there, but just with it loose enough, it allows you to rotate the DPF out as a complete assembly. There's the bracket I was just pointing at right there. It comes on the new DPF. This is uh, the new DPF with the pipes on there, core charge, core paperwork needs to go with the core. Obviously, if you're replacing this with new, new gasket right there. I'm not putting on the coolant line gasket just yet because I don't want to knock it off onto the ground. There was a tag right here that I had to burn off. It's either going to burn off now or it's going to burn off in the car or truck when you're driving it. Just wanted to take a closer look inside the actual filter assembly itself. That was the new one. And now we are in the old one right here just to kind of look in there to see if there's any breaking or any contamination in there. You can see a little bit of speckles in there. I couldn't tell you what those are exactly. Looking down into the def injector hole though, you can see there's some buildup on the bottom. We'll get to that in just a second. We'll see the little crystals built up down on the bottom there. That is normal. That will burn off with a regen. However, it was just something that I was checking out. I wanted to take a closer look inside the uh, filter assembly itself. This is the backside of the filter. Not much really going on there. Didn't expect much, but at least it's not all broken or cracked. And that's kind of what I was looking for. I was just trying to see if there's any cracks or anything showing what actually went south with this and just a closer view of the honeycomb setup in there. Pointing out the hose that's difficult to get to. Definitely want to get this on there before you put everything back on. Because once you get this valve or EGR cooler in place, it's really hard to get to. So I connected the hose beforehand and then bolted up the cooler itself. This is just a closer look of the cooler bolted up or about to be bolted up. All new gaskets, everything needs to be replaced. It's all one-time use. This is the little trick to the DEF injector right here. You have a new clamp, new seal. Now with the bolt still in it, you can squeeze the clamp and it actually locks itself into place like so, so you're not fiddling with it. It's very difficult if you try to do it with just the bolt. And then of course we're going to tighten this up. A new seal is on there, new clamp. This is a one-time use deal. And that's why I'm doing it this way. We've got the pipe on, the EGR cooler. We've got the back pressure valve bolted up. This is the completed project right there. As we can see, we've replaced the DPF.